Hello guys, in this video we're going to answer what is a manifold. Let's remind us what did we cover last time. Last time we covered like how to derive the concept of the manifold from a calculus 1, 2 and multivariable calculus. So basically we discussed on an example calculus 1, if you have a real line and we have some function f on this real line, then you can imagine that you have like this plane which contains this function. And then for this function, we can do a lot of cool things, which is differentiation, integration. And by doing this certain procedure, we can wrap this plane around to a cylinder in the same way how we can do this with a piece of paper, where this real line is going to be just a circle. And my function f is going to be some curve on the cylinder. We discuss that the regular calculus is just doing the differentiation and integration of the functions, which are defined on a domain uh, Rn, or in other words, like R1 and R2, where 1 is calculus 1 and 2, and R2 is a multivariable calculus. But in this video and future videos, we're going to discuss how to do integration and differentiation as a function which are defined on the manifolds. Or in other words, in this case, we have our domain, which is a circle. And by the end of the video, you will understand the concept of the manifold. And by using this concept of the manifold, we're going to show that S1, in other words, a circle is a manifold. And this is our goal. And in order to discuss what is a manifold, we need to come back to our real line in our plane. Or in other words, it's just Rn, which is Euclidean space. And we want to discuss what are the important characteristics do we know about our Euclidean space. So, for example, let's take a plane. So here we have a plane R2, which is given a y-axis and x-axis. And what do you know about this plane? That we can think about this, about this plane from two perspectives. The first, a plane is a physical object, which is a two-dimensional space that goes to infinity in all directions. But from the other side, the plane has a coordinate system, which allows us to choosing by any point P in our coordinate system to assign to this point P and number AB, where we can assign this number if we're going to choose the origin and indicate what is my y direction, what is my x direction. So basically, Euclidean space is going to be a combination of the two things, a physical object, which is a plane, and a coordinate system, or in other words, a grid. So the picture that I recommend to mention every time when you have this physical object, you just watching at your Euclidean space from above, where my plane is going to cover by this coordinate system. In other words, we have R2. And there is one more thing that we need to discuss. We need to discuss an important characteristic of a plane. So let's choose some points P1, P2, and P3. And we know that for each point PI has a unique coordinate A1, B1. So for example, P2 is equal to A2, B2. So here's the important thing like is unique. Why unique? So for example, if I'm going to take point P, which is equal to B1, A1, B1, and A2, B2, then I can see that in this case, my P1 is going to be equal to P and P2 is going to be equal to P. But this is impossible. And the reason is why, because I'm going to argue by using the classical physics. And we know according to the classical physics, if you, ha if you, if you have a physical object, so, for example, here is like P2. This physical object cannot be at two different places at the same time. So, if I have a point P2 and P3 over here, then they don't equal to each other. So, from here follows that A1 must be equal to A2 and B1 must be equal to B2. So, the coordinate system is defined that for every point P, I can have just a sign number A and B. Okay, and right now we're ready to define what is a manifold. So, I'm going to say that x is a manifold if, first, x is going to be a subset of Rn. And why I'm choosing x to be a subset of Rn? Because I want to start talking about manifold step by step. I will consider manifold as a subset of Rn, which we know. And then I'm going to talk and define manifold as a completely separate object. So, the first condition just tell us where manifolds lives so far. But the second condition is important. I'm saying that X is locally Euclidean. 
So in my future video, I'm going to define local if Euclidean more precise. But let's right now me draw you a picture, which will help you to understand what does local Euclidean mean. So for example, let's take some the surface. So local Euclidean means that every time when I have point P, which belongs to the surface, then around this point P, I can find an open neighborhood an, or an open set such that I can assign a coordinates to this point. So P are going to be assigned coordinates A1, A2, dot, 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 N. So what does it mean that I'm going to assign coordinate? It means I can put a coordinate system on my open set, such that for this coordinate system, I can choose the origin, I can choose my, let's say, X direction, Y direction. And then for this point P in this coordinates, I'm going to assign a number, this A and B. So let's do some examples. So first example, well, let's take the objects that we already know, which is a line R1, and we know that our line uh, R1 is just a line. So in this case, I can take my open set U to be R1. And what does open set mean in this case? It means that for every point X, which belongs to my R1, I can find an open interval or an open ball with some radius epsilon such that x belongs to this open ball or this interval and it belongs to my original set and since i can do this for every point x on my line that's why r1 or u is open okay good. but then you can see as soon as i'm going to fix the origin and i'm going to tell what is uh, a unit interval on this line then every time i'm going to choose some point p on my real line, I'm going to assign point P some number A, which in this case, for example, A is approximately equal to negative uh, 2.5. And as my second example, you can do the, you can repeat the same procedure by assigning X to BRN. And based on these two examples, you can see that uh, R, R1 and RN are Euclidean spaces. And if the space is Euclidean, it's obviously is locally Euclidean. So we gain nothing new. But let's right now discuss the third example, which is a circle. So I want to show that S1 is a manifold. So what do I need to do? I need to show three things. The first thing is that S1 is a subset of some Rn, but actually is a subset of R2. The second thing that I want to show is that S1 cannot be it must be covered by at least two opens uh, open subsets so for example in this case we can see that r1 we covered just by this open subset u but for circle we will we must have at least two so the circle example is not trivial as the previous two and the last thing by using these two open subsets we're going to argue and to show that s1 is locally Euclidean. For part A, it's pretty obvious. We know that S1 can be described as a set of points in R2, such that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Let's show part B. So let's draw a circle. To say that this circle is going to be covered by only one open subset U, it means that every time I'm going to choose point P, to this point P, I'm going to assign some coordinate A. And remember, as soon as we have a coordinate system, for every point must be assigned a unique coordinate. And actually, let me discuss one more thing, which will allow us to show that we need to at least two open covers. Every time when you have point P over here, you can choose any direction around your point P, and you kind of can extend your coordinate system to infinity. So right now, it doesn't matter at what point I'm going to take my points, then these points I'm going to describe by the same coordinate system. So in this case, if P is going to be some number A, then what I can have? I can have number zero and let's say this is my number A. And if we'll think about this as a particle which moves around the circle with some constant speed. And if this is zero, I can see that when I'm going to reach 2 pi, if I'm start here, then I'm going to reach this point again, which is zero. And if I'm going to move a little bit further, I'm going to reach this point A again. 
So by rotation of 2 pi, my p is going to have another coordinates which is a plus 2 pi. And again is y. Because as soon as I have some point p which belongs to my manifold, according to the plane example, I can take the, this point and just continue moving this point forward in any directions to infinity. And on this path, for every point, I'm going to have a unique coordinate. But this is not true for a circle. If I'm going to go around the circle, I'm going to come back to the same point. So that's why we cannot cover circle by one open subset. And finally, let's show part C. So we can see that uh, over here we have a problem like this point. So let's try to throw away this point. When we're going to throw away this point, and if I'm going to draw a real line like this, and then I'm going to draw this ray that goes through this circle and through this real line, we can see that I have a one-to-one -one correspondence between point A and point B. And since I have the coordinates on the real line, which in this case I will just indicate this is my zero, and this is my A, then by prescribing the coordinates of the real line to the point P on a circle, I'm going to impose a coordinate system on my circle. So for example, in this case I can see that this is my zero, this is my 1, this is my negative 1, and if I will continue moving this ray towards positive infinity, then my coordinates will go to positive infinity when they're approaching a uh, north pole. So in this case, my u is just equal to s1 minus north pole, which is a point 0, 1. So right now we can see for every point on my circle I have a coordinate except this point, which is a north pole. So to cover this point n, I just need to use another open. And open that I'm going to use is going to be s1 minus south pole, or point uh, 0, negative 1. Based on the picture, I'm going to have a circle without a south pole. And then you can see that for my point p, which is equal to the north pole, right now I can assign a coordinate, which is exactly. And for any other point, I also can draw this ray and get a one-to-one -one correspondence between point B and point A. So as a summary, we can see that if I take a circle, for this circle, I will consider two opens U and V, which is S1 without uh, a North Pole and S1 without a South Pole. And every time I'm going to choose some point P1, P2, or P3 on my S1, these points are going to belong to both of the opens or for example this point p3 is not going to belong to the first open u and i'm going to talk more in details what is going to happen with the current system if i have two opens in my future videos okay thank you for watching bye bye